All right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Two Idiot Girls. You're probably like, what the heck? This video looks way different. And the sound sounds so much better. And the sound, so much better. You're in the same room together. How is that possible? (laughs) Welcome to our new set. Woohoo! Shout out to our Auntie Christy, who helped us design it. Yes. And to both of our parents for helping us set everything up. Yes. And getting it very pretty. Yeah, it's perfect, honestly. It came out so nice. And And now you can watch us, too. Well, they have been, but on Zoom. I mean, like, you can watch us, like, with a set and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think people will, will, because you guys are spoiled, people will be more likely to watch it like this. Yeah. Like, (laughs) our our little brother doesn't listen to our podcast, and he told me once you start (laughs) uploading videos, he'll be all over it. I, I honestly, I feel that, though. As someone who has two podcasts, mm-hmm. I like prefer to watch stuff yeah. too. Well, so and he I loves feel to it. watch a show, so this is a show. Yeah, it just depends on your preference. But we have lots of loyal listeners too. So yeah. now yeah, you, yeah. even for our loyal listeners who like prefer the podcast version of it, mm-hmm. they can literally just listen mm-hmm. um, with much better quality now. Yeah, so come, everything's been amped up. On. Everything's been amped up, including all the editing. My yeah. God. <laughs> So today's episode is really special, not only because it's our first one in the studio space together, Mm -hmm. but also because it's our first advice episode because we've gotten, how many times do people ask you for advice? That's your whole life, is it not? That's my whole (laughs) life. If it's not making fun of terrible fucking dudes, it's literally giving advice. Yeah. Yeah. So, Which uh, I love to do. I'm a Virgo. So I love to give advice. Well, I'm a chismosa, so I love to know everyone's business. <laughs> What's your sign to chismosa? <laughs> that's my sign. No, literally. That's so funny because I I saw a TikTok. Oh, no, you sent it to me. Mm-hmm. And it was a dude being like, this is like your POV. You're in a conversation with a Virgo. Mm-hmm. And then one of them was like, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's literally like, are we, uh, do you want me to listen or do you want me to give you my advice? Yeah. Are we venting or are we problem solving? Mm-hmm. Like all that kind of stuff, like, like giving unsolicited, like I always have to ask you first, do you want advice from me or You don't no? always ask, but you, sh- yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I think I just assume that if you're telling me that you want my feedback. Yeah, sure. But I've, as I've gotten older, I've gotten a lot better at asking. Yeah. Like, are well, you also too, if I, me? I feel like we've both gone a lot better as sisters being like, I have to tell you, I want to talk to you about something, but please don't give me advice. Just listen to me. Yeah. And then at that's the, like maturity. And I then think. after I finish venting, I'm like, okay, now give me advice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like, I'll tell you a whole thing. And then I'm like, what do you think? And you're all, you said you just wanted me to listen. Yeah. I'm on. Now I have to retell it to you so you can like think analytically. <laughs> that hat on my advice hat. Yeah. On. yeah. <laughs> you're all, hold on. <laughs> and you put on another hat. <laughs> I have a mustache all of a sudden. No, you change the sign like the peanuts or like the doctor is in. <laughs> Stupid. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, and then I give you advice and then you go, nah, it's not that. Well, all right. <laughs> that's how I used to be. The doctor's out. <laughs> that's how I used to be. Yeah. I'm just kidding. No, not so much anymore. Mm-hmm. But I commented on that TikTok. I said, oh, oh, you thought you could just play videos of me and I wouldn't notice? Yeah. I showed it to Billy and he was like, makes me sick. Because I literally I verbatim, I've told him, I said, are we venting or are we problem solving like verbatim i've said that to <laughs> what's so I, the plan girl? yeah please literally stop. i'm always like that's well, true if we always talk about this was a huge inside joke and as we keep doing the podcast we'll talk about it oh yeah but we talk about being a doll like if you were a doll and they had a string in your back yeah like a woody doll yeah like what yeah. would be the phrases okay so one of yours would be are we problem solving or are we venting yeah no i say no it'd be like what's what's the plan yeah so what are we doing we what's need the plan? we need a plan yeah what's one of mine one of yours oh my gosh I feel so put on the spot. Hurry up. No, because you're not really, you're the most impatient person I've ever met in my entire life, but you don't really say that. Hurry up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Something about buying new things. Jason always like, should I get this? Things. Yeah. Get should this. I get, oh dude, <laughs> fuck dude. Should I get this or How, buy me this? If anyone ever wanted to peek into what my text conversations with Jason are like, <laughs> it's genuinely her sending me 50 fucking pictures of stuff of different things. They're not related. And she's going, should I get this? Tell me if I should get this. And she goes, check yes or no. Should I get this? <laughs> and then sometimes I go, no. And she goes, why not? I'm all dog. You asked me yes or no. <laughs> there should be no explanation after. She goes, well, I just feel like maybe I should. I'm all, okay, then get it. She goes, maybe I don't need it though. I'm all, dude, <laughs> I can't, I can't handle it. Should I get this? Yeah. Should I get this? What's your big three? I forget. So I'm a Sagittarius sun. I knew that. A Capricorn moon. Oh, dog. And a Cancer rising. I know. 
That's so funny because I just read, okay, I was just talking to Teffy about this. You were there. Yeah. But like I, with straight men, especially, I love to read them their charts yeah. because they literally think you're like doing witchcraft on them. I didn't know being a Capricorn, anything was bad until very recently. Oh no, I dude. Know. Well, that explains why you so, you're so like, um, like flying off the handle for people you love kind of thing. Yeah. Like you're, you're so like, oh my God, dude, if you go up to Dace and you're like, that person over there said they were going to kill me. Dace and like immediately is like, I'm going to kill them. Like she'll literally go over there. <laughs> like, and she's not a confrontational person at all. But when it comes to stuff Only like for that, other people, not for Yeah, me. not for yeah. herself, but for people she loves specifically. Well, me, walk all over me. Who cares? <laughs> yes. Make me cry. That's fine. No. But don't ever make my sister cry. Oh no, yeah. She's super like that. Um. And a cancer rising. Dude, the no wonder you're rising so is why I'm so emotional. Yeah, I know. No wonder you're so emotional. When I was telling Sarah, she goes, oh, a cancer rising. I go, yeah. She goes, that makes I sense. I was just, okay, so I was just reading a chart to one of Billy's friends yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, I, I know I'm a Pisces. I was like, I, I love Pisces <gasps> yeah, men. Why? I know this is, might be controversial, but I really love Pisces I men. Know, our dad's a Pisces. Our dad's a Pisces. Um, but you know what? We need to look at his chart. Because he's kind of like. Not out of control, but he's kind of like, <laughs> he's like kind of spontaneous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, he's real. Um, there should call be it? some Sagittarius in there. I what's, feel it. What's the word? Spon not spontaneous. It's like where you're like so like off the, like random, like. He's random. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. But he just gets wild hairs up his ass to do stuff all the yeah. time. Which is like a good thing. Like we are setting this up. And also and a stressful we, thing. We were talking <laughs> <laughs> we never know what that guy's thinking yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were like oh we're gonna hang a mirror so we can look at our our camera to see how it's filming yeah and then he's like no i want to hang a tv in there and mount it for you okay and he's like and i'm gonna get some cords and plug and them i'll into figure the, the whole thing out yeah like he literally well that's probably why he's so good at everything i know because he gets so passionate about things so quickly like as they're like comets like as as fast as they burn bright they fizzle yeah. out and then he's over he's it like, i don't want to do that after anymore. he's mastered it which yeah. is in two seconds he's uh -huh. like right, i'm over it yeah <laughs> like, literally no literally like, yeah well he was a pisces sun this is your friend okay <laughs> a pisces sun a capricorn moon okay and a cancer rising <gasps> like almost identical how old is he? He's the same age as me. Oh, okay. Yeah, 26. Or no, he just turned 27, so. So, a little bit older than you. Yeah, so he's <laughs> born the same year as me. I but understand. I was literally, I, I did his chart and everything, and I was reading it to him, and he was like, <laughs> he's so funny, because I was telling him, like, yeah, you seem, you're someone who's very emotional, like very emotionally sentient. So you feel very deeply. And I said, um, you probably are someone who doesn't like to hang out with people who have a lot going on with them because you tend to absorb the emotions of others. Oh, yeah. And then he was like. Literally the green mile is like he, me no, as a character. No, dead ass. Yeah. He was literally going. And I go, do you like not like to watch movies that make you feel sad or make you feel upset because you'll hold on to it for too long? Yeah. And he was like, yo, this is fucking weird. Like he was literally <laughs> like, he goes, I saw I saw a lady walking with her son the other day uh -huh. and her son was kind of struggling. I think um, her son had some kind of like something where it was hard for him to walk. Okay. She was trying to help him walk on his own. Mm -hmm. And he's like, and I watched it for too long and I've been thinking about it for weeks and it made me cry when I saw it. Aww. And I was like, see, it's very emotional. Yeah. There's someone who absorbs the emotions of others. So yeah. I was like, I was like saying all that shit to him and he was like, they literally think you're doing witchcraft on them when you read it to straight men. Daisy yeah. doesn't hang out with straight men, but no, I do. I'm like, oh. <laughs> she goes, I can't relate, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, yeah. like, we're having friends over. I'm like, who is it? And it's like three straight men. I'm all, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'll stay home. Yeah. Like, we had a bunch of friends over the other night, and my my mom goes, oh, would you invite Daisy? And I go, nah, she wouldn't want to come. <laughs> she said, why? And I said, because there's going to be a lot of straight dudes here. And she was like, oh. And then I told Daisy, and she goes, yeah, I don't want to. It's do like that. trying to speak with like, animals or something i just <laughs> don't want to do that the only straight men i want to be around are uh my dad and my brother that's it and my damn uncle. not even billy who i'm just kidding <laughs> and billy <laughs> and little peewee that's fine dude billy's probably like one of the only straight men that Dason is that not I can related talk to. to yeah yeah the Dason's not related to and i could leave alone in a room yeah and like they'll be totally fine yeah they'll have they'll have they'll laugh and joke and about to stuff. be honest that's kind of recent like i've known yeah. since i was 14 and i feel like i'm just now comfortable yeah talking. and me and billy have been dating for almost five years yeah and it's not because i don't like him it's just i don't i feel i've always felt really weird around men yeah Period. but i feel like most women can relate to that sentiment especially gay women yeah because you're gay so yeah a little bit <laughs>
enough of it, right? <laughs> so this is an advice episode. Yeah. And we're kind of, since, should we tell them what we're planning on doing should anyways? We tell them? Should we tell them? <laughs> Basically, we're planning on giving advice now. Because that's typically what you guys want to hear anyways. Yeah. So we're probably going to start centering each episode around a theme. Yeah. And then we're going to ask questions. you. questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then, then we'll do it that way. Mm-hmm. And you can get some advice from two mm-hmm. idiot girls. And we'll do fun ones. Like, I have, we've had a lot of people request us to do stuff on Marvel, which... Hello, I'm, I'm yeah. obsessed. I mean, I I feel like I'm I, I can fake it till I make it when it comes to Marvel. But you know, what I, like some of them will be like, "What are you?" I know enough though. Yeah, like what are your favorite theories and like yeah, your favorite Marvel movies or whatever yeah. characters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So that's what we're going to be doing now, mm-hmm. which we're very excited for. Yeah, I feel like all of y'all are are absolutely frothing at the mouth for advice. Anyways, it's, yeah, and it's yeah. so it works out. And so this episode has no theme. It no is theme. just advice. It's just advice. Yeah. And just- boy, did you, you did y'all ask questions. There's a hundred and forty of them. And that's only when you cut it off. There might have I been did, more. Yeah, there might have been more. <laughs> I think there yeah. was way more, but Dason like cut it off at a certain point. Yeah. So. All right. Well, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So we're just going to randomly pick them. So this person, they said, how do I come out to my family? I mean, and I feel like that's something we can both relate to because I've had to come out to my family. Yeah. And Drew has been a family that I've come out to. (laughs) So it's two different perspectives. Yeah. I can give a perspective on the opposite end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, coming out was very hard. And I think because everyone's different Mm -hmm. for the coming out part that was hard for me, I thought was going to be like telling my family. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was coming out to myself. Yeah. And being comfortable with yeah. who I am as a person. Yeah. And knowing that I'm still the same. Like, I don't know. It was just really hard. So there's no right or wrong way to come out. It's definitely to each person. It's going to be a completely different experience. Yeah. Um. So if I were you, I would pick one person in your family that you connect with the most. Or yeah. That, that way, like, if the person, you know, the hardest one to come out to, don't do that one first. Yeah. Do someone easy. Yeah. So I did my mom. I And she, I thought was going to be the hardest one to come out to. Yeah. And she wasn't. I think I was more worried to tell my grandpa, even though he, like, didn't care. Yeah. And it's just because he's old. So, yeah. But yeah, so I told my mom and yeah. then told Drew. Mm-hmm. Then I told my dad. He was the easiest one. Him and my brother. Yeah. He was yeah. like, I don't care how many girlfriends you have, but why yeah. are you getting bad grades? And I was like, yeah. My dad was literally like, I don't care if you're dating a houseplant, Jason. I'm not paying for you to get no fucking D's in yeah. college. And that it was wasn't for a D. It was a C. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well have been a D. And then I told um, our brother and he didn't really give a shit. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I've kind of talked about this before, but... Um, I've been really open about this, but like when Dason first told me when she came out, I did not react in the way I wished that I had. And it wasn't because I thought anything differently of her. It wasn't because I thought she was gross or anything like that. Not literally at all. Had nothing to do with others. Like I've always, I always was like, yeah, I'm super open to everyone. I've always loved everyone. But I think at the end of the day, when it comes to people that you love most in the world, um, if you yourself didn't know, cause I had no idea. Mm-hmm. I had no fucking clue. Me and Dason grew up together. We shared a room till mm-hmm. I was like 17 years I old. Know. Like we did everything together and I had no fucking idea at the time. Looking back. Makes it's, a lot of it's, sense. It's pretty fucking obvious. Makes like a lot of sense. hindsight's 2020. Mm-hmm. Like when you look back, it's, pr- it's very obvious now. Mm-hmm. But at the time, I think what I hated most was that I didn't know. Yeah. And so I reacted not negatively towards her, but just in general, because I felt like there was a piece of her that I had no idea about. Mm-hmm. And that made me feel some type of way about myself. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem when I think family members of gay people, people who want to come out to them is you tend to center yourself yeah you're like oh well like what about me like i didn't know about you i didn't know about this i didn't know about that Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day it has nothing to do with you Mm -hmm. it has to do with the fact that someone who you love so much in this world trusts you enough to want to share their entire beings with you Mm -hmm. and like that's what you should be focusing on but that's not what i focus on i focused on me not knowing how could I have possibly not known when me and Dason are best friends and always have been since mm-hmm. we were born. How, like I focused on external family, like, you know, how they would react to her, how they would treat her, how they would treat our family. I was like terrified for her. I think yeah. that was 98% of it was me being so terrified that she was going to get hurt. She was going to get treated poorly. Yeah. Cause I always defended you against mm-hmm. people who were just mean to you, let alone someone yeah. being homophobic. 
So we talked about it in the last episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like for me, I was centering myself in that situation as opposed to centering her and the fact that she wanted to share that with me. So like I came around, obviously I stopped thinking about myself and pulled my own head out of my own ass long mm. enough to be like, I, I don't hate you. Like I didn't even get a chance to tell her that. Cause that's how fucking like selfish I was being at the time she told me. So I apologized to her not too long after that. And I was like, I'm sorry that I centered myself in that situation. It has nothing to fucking do with me. It literally has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. She just wanted to be open with me and I'm glad she was. But um, that's one of the few regrets I have in my life is mm -hmm. how I reacted when you told me I wish that I hadn't done that. Yeah. Like, I wish I didn't, ha I wasn't thinking about me when you told me. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, how did I not know? How could you have not told me? Mm -hmm. How could I have not seen this? And when it had zero fucking to do with me. Mm -hmm. So like, I guess if you're going to come out, like from what advice I can give you as like a heterosexual person, um, as a family member of a gay person, I would say to make sure you're safe, mm -hmm. right? Make sure you feel safe mm -hmm. completely yeah, I in think your living I would situation. Go into, into it having no expectations. Exactly. Yeah. So then you can be disappointed if something bad happens. Yeah. But I would just have no expectations <clears throat> except to, I think you're, you have pride in that you're allowing yourself to share a huge piece of you with people. Yeah. And like, if they don't like that, that's on them, not on you, which is yeah. so much easier said than done. It doesn't make it any easier because yeah. I have come out to people who I don't talk to anymore and you know, it broke my heart, mm -hmm. but thankfully I've been really blessed with like my immediate family has been very welcoming. Yeah. So I want everyone to understand too. I wasn't like, yeah, you're fucking disgusting. That's not what I did. No, it was just like, what the fuck? I was literally yeah. like, what? Like I was so, I was just so caught off guard. And at that time, and I was like terrified for her. Being queer wasn't like what it is right now. Yeah. So thankfully if you haven't come out yet, not to say thankfully, like you're just gonna be better than mine, but like, I would hope it might since there's so much more representation out right now mm -hmm. that isn't just literally Ellen, you know what I mean? Yeah. And this also says coming out like, so I don't know if it's your sexuality or if it has to do with your gender identity or whatever. Yeah, it could but be I anything. But I would definitely, like, the first person I, I came out to who wasn't my family was my best friend, Kaylani. Yeah. And she was so accepting and I couldn't stop crying when I was telling her mm -hmm. on, like, we didn't even have Zoom back then, back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we were on, like, Skype or something. Yeah. And she, like, didn't care. So if you want to practice on, like, coming out to, like, your friends first or, yeah. friend, like, whoever you pick, whether it's in your friend or your family group. Yeah. I would just pick someone you know that, like, you're really close with and that'll work out. And if you're not close to any of them, then I would do one at a time. I think I, I can't imagine doing it in a group setting it going very well. Yeah. And well, and it's different. And to remember too, that sometimes family is not blood. Yeah. Sometimes you have to have chosen family, which we have chosen family too. Although our immediate family and a very small circle outside of our immediate family that's yeah. blood related to us. We're very, very close to, yeah. but there's a bunch of extended family that we're not close to at all. And they yeah. know why <laughs> Like they, they know <laughs> why. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's something too, that you should keep in mind, but as long as you're safe, right. Um, that includes your living situation, mm -hmm. your financial situation, and you feel safe enough to come out to someone then, um, you know, whenever you're ready. Yeah. That's what I say. Whenever you're ready. But just to, like Dason said, go into it knowing that you're doing this for you, not for them. That mm -hmm. way you're not setting yourself up for failure when it comes to expectation at all. Yeah. Yeah. That was a heavy one to start with. I know. But I, I wish you luck. And I love you. <laughs> I know. We both love you. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of these are kind of heavy, so. That's fine. You got to take a break. Pause right here. Come right back. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next one, this is from someone named Dean, and they said, I've been struggling a lot lately with anxiety and depression and loving myself. How do you manage to love yourself? Oof. I mean, we kind of talked about that today, about loving yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. When? When I was talking about at the beach? Yeah. Like, yeah. like just how, how it's evolved over time. Uh-huh. I like to say a lot of times, because I do get questions like that a lot, I like to say um, delusional self-confidence. Sure. Never does any. It can never, you can never really go wrong is what I think. Yeah. But if you have no confidence, how do you even pretend you have confidence? You know what Well, I mean? like you just said, you pretend. That's what you do. That's honestly, that's what I, that's what I would suggest mm. you do is just to pretend like, like a method acting almost mm -hmm. as if you're confident. And then eventually you're going to trick your brain into believing that it's true. Because mm -hmm. all of that is is steeped in your brain that that's no reflection of like you if you think about it you truly have no perception of what you really look like and what mm -hmm. you're really like you like have, a, like any sort of correct yeah yeah you have no no real perception of it because yeah. you're living in your own world 
a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> Remember when I was telling you, if you're going to make up a story, you might as well make up a good one. Yeah. You know one what that I mean? serves you. Yeah, yeah. Make up one that serves you. Yeah. Make up one that makes you feel so good about yourself mm-hmm. because who's going to tell you what's wrong? Mm-hmm nobody you know what i mean (laughs) yeah so so dean said that they're struggling a lot with anxiety and depression same um i think we've done that too we've done it (laughs) i have that too (laughs) shame i have one of those too (laughs) um i we've done a mental health episode yeah i oh so if you want to go back and listen to it please do yeah but to give advice now i think i would try and do little things that take care of you and then yeah. that, that is honestly what makes you love yourself. Like when yeah. you take care of yourself, you're like, damn, I'm like kind of a good person. You know yeah. I mean? Well, cause a lot of times when you're struggling like that mentally, you don't, you tend to not take care of yourself. And I'm speaking from experience, yeah. but then when that happens and you do do whatever it is, like something really small, like you go sit outside, like you make yourself a cup of coffee, go sit outside in the sun and, or you put on a cute outfit or maybe you paint your nails or maybe you put on a little bit of makeup, like that's taking care of yourself. Then you're Mm -hmm. like, you look at yourself and you're like, Oh, I look so nice today. Like that's taking care of yourself. Right. So it starts to kind of build your confidence a little bit. I would say though, to make sure that you're healthy mentally before you, uh, really start to think like how to build up self-confidence, unless they're bleeding into each other, Mm -hmm. unless they're bleeding into each other. Yeah. So yeah, I was just looking for little ways to perform. Like my mom always calls it practicing radical self care, self love, and self love. And then yeah. the more you take care of yourself, then you start to appreciate yourself a little bit more and kind of see like all of the things that everyone else sees about you. Because I'm sure you're a wonderful, Dean. So yeah, and also, what are you saying to yourself every yeah. day too? Like, are you are you doing affirmations? I know sometimes people think affirmations are silly. They're not, but I do them all the time. Mm-hmm. I do them every morning. Or if I'm in the shower, I like repeat them over and over to myself. Say them to yourself in the mirror so mm-hmm. you can see yourself and, and talk to yourself. Mm-hmm. And like I said, delusion goes a long way if it's being used right. Yeah. <laughs> if it's being used correctly and it's not being used to harm anyone. Yeah, You can very easily have a delusional self-confidence because I truly believe that that is what fosters real confidence. Mm-hmm. You, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even if it's make-believe. Mm-hmm. So. You start somewhere and then you really start to believe it because I always tell people like you are one of one. There's only one you. Mm -hmm. That's the most unique thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So why not celebrate that? You know what I mean? And just understand that you're the most unique thing in the world because you are you. Mm -hmm. And people deserve to know that you're just as special as anybody else. Mm -hmm. So there you go. There you go. Yeah, and I always tell myself too that I won't always feel like this. Mm-hmm. I just feel like this right now, and that's okay. there's nothing wrong with that, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not gonna feel like this forever. Yeah, sometimes it feels pretty impending. You're yeah, like, sometimes Damn. it feels like it's gonna stay. It's gonna stick around for a lot yeah. longer than it will. But that's your your brain playing tricks on you. Yeah, yeah. So tell yourself tell yourself stories that serve you. Don't tell yourself stories that don't. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like just like try to take as best care of yourself as you can. Yeah, whatever that looks like. Yeah. There's no there's no right or wrong or like too big or too small thing to do mm-hmm. to take care of yourself. It doesn't have to be anything grandiose. Mm-hmm. It could just literally be like making yourself coffee mm-hmm. cool. and going and sitting outside. I love that. Yeah. yeah. A good a good moment in the sun. Yeah, That'll sun will help a lot. For yeah. you. Oh my god, I know. I turn into a shut in when I'm very I anxious literally and told Drew I'm gonna put a chair in her backyard and <laughs> make her sit back there every day for at <laughs> yeah. least twenty minutes. To sit in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Photosynthesis. Literally. Yeah, I, re- I really need it to because it can get dark in my house. So like, I'll I'll just live like a vampire. Literally in the I shadows. come in and she's just like running past this. Like in a cave. Did you see that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> like a haunted house. Yeah, like in that episode of SpongeBob where he's like a caveman. Remember? He's mm-hmm. like running around like a like yeah. A sometimes people. Sometimes my mom and sister will come over. They'll be like, "How long have you been in here?" And I'm like, "Huh? I don't want." I to- stopped counting long. long I have enough. a white. I have a white beard. I'm like, "What year is it?" <laughs> <laughs> even cane all of a sudden right that's when i'm depressed <laughs> okay this next one is kind of funny so let me know if you wanted to do this one because this is directed at you oh right? no, okay so this is from someone named ayana okay and uh she wants to know this is literally how she wrote it drew how in all caps do i bag a professional athlete <laughs> where do i what do i do where do i go <laughs> I know you had NFL players approach you. Is yeah. your secret just you being hot? <laughs> I live in Arizona and I really want a Suns player. LOL. A Suns player. Here's the thing funny. about men in basketball. That's a basketball team, right? Yes. Those men are too tall and it should be against sense. the law and I don't like it. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, first of all, that's fucking hilarious. That's so funny. 
Second of all, um, beauty is subjective. Okay. So hot to one person is not going to be hot to another person. Um, and third, nothing makes straight dudes more horny or more upset. It's either one or the other. When you tell them a story about how a professional athlete tried to hook up with you <laughs> at some point, it either makes them, it gets them bricked up or it gets them so <laughs> angry. They want to fight you. It's one or the other. Um, and it's because they wish they were either them or they were on top of them. And that's a story for another day. But, um, how do you bag them? You know how you bag them? You just act like you have no idea who they are. Yeah. Oh my God. If you genuinely are like, nice to meet you. My name's Drew. What's your name? They're going to be like, <sighs> like immediately they're going to be like, like, I literally just jizzed in my pants right now. <laughs> they're going to be like, get that girl, my phone. <laughs> no, they, I, and I, and the funny thing is when I told those stories on TikTok, that was before I blew up at them. Like, dude, the amount of dudes that were like, he would never fuck you because he has high standards. I'm all, and what are those? You? Yeah. Like, <laughs> if that were me. Some fucking, if that were me. Some fucking Chad from Michigan. You think he's going to ask you back to his hotel room? May thinks not, buddy. But again, I don't know. They're laying in bed and he goes, I know all your stats. <laughs> Six catches, four touchdowns. Well, that's why it's so funny because when I met them, first of all, you got to be put, you got to put yourself in a situation where you're going to meet them on yeah. a personal level. They're not going to see you at a game. Yeah. Like, unless you're like court side, bitch. Like and even gonna, then, like, and even then they, they may or may not, but even then court side, you know how many hot bitches are court side yeah. men and women and yeah. everybody else in between. Are you kidding me? There's I too watched, many hotties. You gotta, you gotta it. distinguish yourself. I watched, an <laughs> <laughs> I watched an interview with, I think with Simu Liu. Oh yeah. And he went to like, he's got a great name. I love that it's, name. It's awesome. Right. Yeah. It almost, Simu sounds Samoan. Samoan, yeah. Samoan. I think that's why I like it so much. But I, I fuck with you the name regardless. You see me. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. But I saw an interview with him once. It might have been Jimmy Fallon. I can't remember. And he was courtside, I think, at like a Knicks game. Yeah. And he was saying, going, he's like, have you ever been courtside? Like, Simu was talking about it. And he's like, yeah, I have. And he goes, the thing that no one tells you is that you have, it's like you're acting while you're sitting there. Yeah, because they're taking pictures of he you. He said they're constant. So you like don't want to laugh ugly. You don't yeah. want to get too drunk. You yeah. don't want to. And he's like, so you're, it's like you're also performing. You're, you're posing. And he's the like, whole and time? it's so stupid because I'm at a game where people are actually doing something. Yeah. Like, I'm should just, and you're like doing. in a photo shoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and I am also working at this game, and that makes no sense. <laughs> to me yeah that's what i said there's too many too many famous people too many hot people yeah um first get yourself in a situation where you're gonna meet them on a personal level whether that's a party or like a practice or something like i don't fucking know but i <laughs> I, I met them because i did pro bowl when i was in college for those yeah. of you who know pro bowl if you know you know um just a bunch of the best players who didn't go to the super bowl they all go to this thing right in the off season so they come and that's how i met them and when I went, I took one of my buddies <laughs> who he knows everything about everyone. Anyone who's ever touched a ball professionally, mm -hmm. he knows about them. Mm -hmm. He knows their stats. He knows where they went to college. He knows their blood type. Yeah. He knows literally everything about them. I am not like that. Although mm -hmm. I worked in sports, I knew when I know enough like yeah. to report and all that, but mm -hmm. I'm not like him. I'm not a Rolodex. Yeah. So I brought him and he was literally like, I told him, I'm like, I think it's this guy. And I would tell him, I would describe to him what they looked like and what number they had on them and that kind of stuff. And he'd be like, you know who that is? And he would tell me, I'd be like, dude, that's why I fucking brought you because you're the yeah. encyclopedia and I'm not. I'm the one who gets them to walk over to us. And then you're the one who gets to ask, can I get a picture? <laughs> can I get a kiss? I'm get just picture? kidding. I'm just kidding. If you ever listen to this, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's how I met them, though. I yeah. met them through work. It was like a work thing. And I say this all the time. They're at the end of the day, even if they're famous athletes, they're still fucking dudes. Like mm -hmm. they're still men. They're fucking is they're not fucking dudes. They are fucking dudes. <laughs> I mean, they may be, <laughs> but who knows? But they're still dudes. Like they're still men, like mm -hmm. men and like me, man, want girl with titties and ass. Like that's literally <laughs> how they think. So it's all the same. Like it really doesn't matter if you just act like, you know, where you're at Yeah, and you act confident. And then when they come up to you, you mm -hmm. say, my name's what's her name? Ariana or Ayana. Ayana. Okay, so you say you say, Hi, my name's Ayana, what's yours? That alone's gonna get them to talk to you for at least five minutes. Yeah. Because they're gonna be like, Oh, she's not you know all those fanfics when they're like, I don't even listen to this man, you're reading a book in the crowd. Yeah. That's literally you at sports events. Because you know what everybody else is doing? Going, Hey man, I saw you play in two thousand twelve <laughs> back at Ohio State. <laughs> And you know what? Like, they don't give a shit oh, about I knew that. I you were going to be somebody. That's why I said. And if they're terrible, because I did meet a lot of athletes that were f actually fucking really perverted and awful. 
Uh, if they're bad without money, they're going to be even worse with money. Mm-hmm. But I met a lot of athletes that were very nice. Yeah. Very nice, very respectful, really fucking funny. A lot of them are super cool guys, but some of them are not. And that's just, those are just the stats, friend. Period. If you want a Suns, if you want a Suns player, man, I wish you all the best, girly. Just go get into an environment where you'll run into yeah. them. Yeah. No, that's, that makes sense. And also. And not like at a club or something like that. Well, even then I met one at a club too. Yeah. But the, the odds of you running into them at a club are yeah. pretty low. And Well, I don't know. Arizona's small. She said yeah. she lives in Phoenix, right? Uh-huh. So I'm sure they'd be hanging out at certain yeah. places. Should get, she slide into his DMs? Do you think that'll get him? No. No? No. They get hundreds of thousands of DMs a day. I know. So you don't think they look From that. mostly men, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Being like, hey, buddy, I watched you play. Yet. Hey, good luck. Hey, <laughs> good luck. Oh, my God. That took. <laughs> have you guys seen that tiktok where the <laughs> that guy's girlfriend found his looked through his dms and he he messaged lebron james good luck <laughs> no he that's an Tom ick. Brady good luck for the super bowl or whatever <laughs> game dude did he play in the super bowl i made that up the no tom before. brady did not in this most recent one in this most recent super bowl yeah no, I was no, they, not in this most recent. They Super almost Bowl. made it. The Bucks almost made it. Though. Yeah, I know a thing or two about football. I was like, Tom Brady has been to many Super no, Bowls. No, I know, uh, and he's won many. I'm Super talking Bowls. about this most recent one. No, this most recent one was uh, the Browns and the Rams. The Rams, the Rams. <laughs> I know everyone else is like, do you like the Rams? I'm like, no. Who? <laughs> I'll go to a Rams game. Hey man, yeah. let me hit me up. Tell you what, I just, just let me know. I'll be the biggest fan. <laughs> that's why i yeah that's my big my i mean a club yeah you could very easily run to them but if they're so famous they probably don't go to regular ass clubs like i ran into one at a club in honolulu because there was very they don't know anything about the club scene there yeah so there was only like two and he went to one of the ones that i went that i used to go into yeah. all the time um but also say his name you coward tell the people i'm just kidding though <laughs> His no, because now it all now it all ends with I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wouldn't fuck with me. Yeah. That's he's a Trump supporter. So brown. Yeah, yeah. No, seriously. No, I won't say it because now it could actually get back to me. Oh yeah, I could talk all that shit when I was smaller. Period. Yeah. I mean, if you want to scroll back and go look, I mean, feel free. But um, my point is, right? What I was gonna say at the end is like don't be surprised too like if they are married with kids yeah like do your fucking research on them first yeah. because sometimes they some of them really be stepping out I mean, and it's sad look at tristan thompson yeah and he doesn't even fucking play so that's another <laughs> thing he, he sucks doesn't? too no fuck no he's not even that good of a basketball player that's what makes it even more embarrassing that she was getting stepped out on by a fucking second stringer damn yeah, he don't even play that well. He doesn't even play good or that well or at all, really. So it's not mm-hmm. like he's a fuck. Not that it would justify it if he was like LeBron James. but No, but like, it like makes it even worse. It's like 10 times you're worse. You're like, you're a shitty person and you're not even good at your job. Yeah, what girl. I would say just to temper your expectations because a lot of them, I mean, you got to understand too. There's probably tons of girls that want to be with athletes too. So like. I mean, they'll spin your yarn though. Though <laughs> they'll tell you like, I want to take you all over the all over the world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just do your research. And like, I I didn't hook up with any NFL players purely because I was like, nah. But it's fun for the story. I know. Well, <laughs> and then it's kind of nasty to think about because you were only like twenty at the time. Oh yeah. And then they're like thirty five. Yeah. Well, one of them was like in his forties. <gasps> Stop. Yeah, one of them was like the in his one, 40s. Huh? Yeah. So yeah. that's something also to take into consideration. And he was and he was married and had kids and I didn't know that. Stop. At the time, yeah, you mm-hmm. didn't know. But that's what I'm saying. So, make sure you're aware of that because Yeah, like don't be one of those. So nasty. Well, yeah. and just don't be one of those girls like where you know and you don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's that's a mean thing to do. Mm-hmm. But if you don't know and it just so happens, then it's going to fuck you up because yeah. you're going to be like, "Oh, fuck, I didn't know that." You know yeah. what I mean? Obviously, cuz I'm sure you're a good person, but I would just say temper your expectations. Unless you're just trying to fuck around, like then fuck it. But also make sure they're not taken yeah you know what i mean but they're easy dude they're easy if you just look at him like and just treat him like he's a dude that plays at la fitness he's gonna be eating that shit up he's gonna be (laughs) like oh my god i've never seen a girl like that before i'm gonna do that at harry to harry styles at coachella (laughs) sorry sorry olivia wilde i'm gonna act like i don't know who he is i know huh (laughs) I'm going to be reading and have glasses. Yeah, literally. Messy, low pony. Yeah. yeah. Only mascara and chapstick. And be like, I don't really listen to that kind of music. Yeah. That kind of girl. Yeah. I, don't, I only listen to classical music. No, gen- genuinely. This is a really interesting question. This is from someone named, I'm really sorry if I mispronounce 
all of your names, but is Abish. They use they, them pronouns. Mm -hmm. Um, And they said, I'm a water moon and cry about a lot. LMAO. Mm -hmm. Same. Well, I looked it up. My moon is earth. What are you a cancer moon? Yeah. I'm a water moon. That makes sense. Yeah. How do I deal with that? And also I'm tongue in. So how do I, sorry, how do y'all navigate femininity when it's very westernized and is low key, the opposite of many Pacifica bodies. So let's do the first question right here. So how do you deal with crying a lot? You know what? Make you it lean into it. Make girl. it half of your personality. That's what I do. Lean into it, babe. That's what yeah. I say. Yeah. Like there's nothing wrong with, with being emotional. I think a lot of times patriarchal standards have made people, women or femme people or just people in general yeah. feel like crying is something to be ashamed of. Yeah. It's like a weakness. Yeah. Or something. And yeah. it's, genuinely not you feeling so deeply for those around you is not a bad thing Mm -hmm. um if it's like hindering your everyday life i would say it's either journal um if you can afford it go to therapy yeah Ooh, yeah um talk to other people but journaling is is a form of therapy so that helps because you can like get all your feelings Mm -hmm. out dason loves to journal Mm -hmm. so it really helps especially if you're going through a hard time you can like look back at the times and yeah. you can see how far you've come. Mm-hmm. So I would, nothing is wrong with that unless it's like hindering your everyday life. Like if you can't like get through a work day or something because you're so emotional about stuff, I would say to start journaling, taking care of yourself and seek professional help. For yeah, sure. if yeah. You can, yeah. If you can, if you're in a position to do so, mm-hmm. but journaling is easy. Mm-hmm. So then you just get a piece of paper or something, just jot down your thoughts. Yeah. I also feel like since you're tongue in as well, um, mental health is something that's like, relatively new to our community yeah so yeah um, as i'm sure it is for most minority groups yeah. too like that just wasn't something that was prominent mm-hmm. um for our cultures but now i feel like it's coming a little bit more to surface which is a good mm-hmm. thing just like being more openly talked about yeah but yeah i would say to just be more be more open to people you trust like if you feel like you need to talk about something a lot of times if you're crying a lot it's because you have something you really need to talk about and get off your chest and get off your chest whatever it may be so whether it's journaling it i would i would suggest both honestly i would i would journal and i would also talk to somebody whether it's a professional or if it's just a family member or Mm -hmm. a friend someone Mm -hmm. you trust and someone you love yeah so that's the first question and then their second question was how do i deal sorry how do you navigate femininity when it's very westernized and is low key the opposite of many Pacifica bodies? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, Oh, I guess a lot of times like femme presenting people are very, they're kind of caught in this like conundrum because women typically are held or femme presenting people are typically held to a certain beauty standard in patriarchy mm-hmm. but a lot of times that beauty standard is eurocentric mm-hmm. so it's you know based around whiteness you know what i mean oh whiteness a thousand percent is, whiteness yeah. is centered in it so a lot of times if you're an intersectional feminist a lot of times you tried not to steer into stereotypes but at the same time we just talked about this the other day about how like sometimes uh, some hardcore feminists will say like taking care of yourself is leaning is like leaning into the male gaze. Yeah. It's like misogyny yeah. because you're doing it for male attention, uh-huh. which I feel like lacks intersectionality because that doesn't include gay women uh-huh. who don't center men at all. Uh-huh. <laughs> gay women don't give a shit about men. So if they themselves love to do or makeup, non-binary people, but yeah, or non-binary yeah. people or asexual people, yeah. people who have no, desire to center men in their pursuits or their Me personal at all times yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well same here i'm like I've, I've been with the same man forever yeah everything i do has nothing to do with him let alone a fucking stranger <laughs> so i feel like a lot of times we're caught in this like it's like a catch-22 you're like i want to take care of myself but also i don't want to feed into this mm-hmm. but also i kind of want to get a nose job but also i don't because mm-hmm. at the same time i mean it gets very convoluted the deeper you go into mm-hmm. it. But I would say to just do whatever feels right to you. Mm-hmm. It's no one's like right to tell you like what's feminine and what's not. Yeah. It's that's truly up to you. Mm-hmm. That's like dealer's choice. If you feel like that's feminine to you, like, yeah. so, you know, some, some women or femme presenting people don't like to shave their armpits. I was going to say body hair. And that's extremely, and that's feminine and beautiful to them. And some women like to be bald, like from, (laughs) from head to toe, (laughs) head to toe. (laughs) And whether it's their coochie or their armpits, they like to be completely bald. If that's feminine to them, that's feminine to them. It's just like, I always think the difference is whether or not you're telling others that's not feminine. Yeah. 
like you're, you're just like policing other exactly. people. Exactly. Yeah. That's like mind your fucking business. Yeah. It has nothing to do with you. If it doesn't mm-hmm. hurt you, it doesn't affect you. It's not harming others. Mm-hmm. It's really none of your goddamn business. Mm-hmm. But you're but this person is right though about how I mean, Pacifica bodies are not typically beauty standard, but that's because that's centered around whiteness. That's not just us. You know yeah, what I mean? That includes all pretty much all bodies. Yeah, yeah. and all and all minority bodies were mm-hmm. all built differently. Mm-hmm. And like obviously like Polynesian women are built much like thicker we're a lot a lot of times taller yeah. right like we got big heads yeah, like i was just gonna say my head alone yeah yeah, yeah we got lots big round faces yeah we have yeah well and that's another thing big too. wide feet well and that's another thing too why like um this is just like a side note but like you know i was telling you the other day that people were making fun of my camera angles on my show yeah and saying that i have like a million chins or whatever the fuck that means I don't believe that that matters, first of all. <laughs> but yeah. second of all, I never would have noticed had people not said that. But that's mm-hmm. just because people are rotten and it's the internet. But also, I almost feel like <laughs> out of spite, I'm not going to fix it. Because I have a really round face. And because I'm Samoan. Many people do. That's what I'm saying. Well, I'm Samoan too. Like, yeah. we have very round features. Like, yeah. I have very a very round face. I have very round cheeks. I have big fucking eyes. Like, I literally have everything about my face is round, including my nose. Like, mm-hmm. everything about it is round. And I like that about myself. Yeah. So, it's almost like out of spite. I'm not going to fix it. <laughs> no. <laughs> and it's not like... It's not even to, like, make the show better. It's no, just to, like... It's just to pick me apart. Yeah. It's just to hurt me. Uh-huh. But that's because... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get my... I didn't get fucking Kybella before my last I shoot. Girl, yeah. My bad. Because I didn't get my chin BBL before I my know. last... And listen, if you want to do that, that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. But I'm such a petty person that out of spite alone, I'm not going to do that. Just like I told you, I'm not going to fix my teeth out of spite. <laughs> because, just because you hate it so much, I'm not going to Just for that? Yeah. I'm just not going to adjust that. anything. <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna lean into it even more. <coughs> I'm gonna get surgery in my teeth to make them worse. Yeah, I'm gonna work. I'm gonna go back to having an underbite, so that's all you see is my bottom <laughs> teeth. You wear <laughs> the same outfit and hairstyle every episode. Yeah, I start one. regressing <laughs> to like my previous teeth stages, so that people can. See. Yeah, that's why I'm saying like that is like very centered around Eurocentric beauty standards. Yeah, having like an, a really angular jawline. Yeah, and um, very high cheekbones. Like yeah. we, I don't have that shit, and there's nothing wrong with Our that. Less body well and i think a lot of times that's why women are like i'm so happy that women who look like you are kind of in the mainstream now or working their way towards her yeah. because then women who look like us because we exist i know outside. and we're like more of the norm i would say than yeah like, yeah than yeah like exactly the kardashians for sure or like someone and this is no tea or shade but like someone like charlie d'amelio yeah beautiful girl yeah she's so fucking gorgeous mm-hmm. but she's um a white girl right yeah. she's built like a white girl right yeah so everything about her is very eurocentric yeah so people are gonna be like oh like she's so fucking gorgeous same with ass and ray yeah very eurocentric so people are like oh so beautiful and then you see someone like me and they're like Ew. very strange woman yeah they're like get your fucking teeth fixed get your fucking your chin fixed blah 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 and mm-hmm. it's like it's almost like you've never seen anybody that wasn't a white person as if they didn't go to school with like many different shaped people and and like different races and yeah everything. that's what i'm saying like it, we're all just built differently and beauty is subjective as is femininity yeah so whatever you perceive to be feminine that's completely 100% up to you mm-hmm. that's why I said the thing about my round face that's why I love Adam so much my hair and makeup artist yeah because he knows how to do round faces yeah. that was like a huge thing for in me in a way that like it doesn't make you look like a completely different person exactly he it's, like it accentuates hi- yeah, highlights like my yeah, roundness your features, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's your why, big oval head that's why, yeah. <laughs> my big moon of a face yeah. bro that's why when uh when i had those pictures and people were like her jawline is completely different i'm yeah. like that's called makeup babe that's called contour they don't say that she when kim kardashian has no makeup on yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean and i looked the same oh, remember, I just that, looked remember that picture of kylie when she was walking in her car i'm not even joking you i showed that picture to adam the other day when he glammed me yeah i said have you ever seen this picture and then i the very next day when that picture went viral mm-hmm. she went out she went out looking at completely yeah. fucking different and she was taking forever to get in her car because she wanted people to see her because yeah. she was like this is how i look all the time yeah not that picture you found me yesterday that's not me yeah that's an imposter that's why i said um that's why billy was like if anything it's the opposite because i always look fucking busted in all my tiktoks yeah <laughs> I showed you guys that's my brand yeah. yeah so it's not like i sprung it on you it's just i sprung an ugly version of me on you like yeah. that's just how i look in real life and then 
And even then, I'm not like, Kylie, you, we, the people deserve to know. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what you really look like, babe. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, dude. It's so exhausting. It's just exhausting existing as a femme presenting person or a woman mm-hmm. in this world. It's exhausting. I would just say to understand that we're never going to look how other Eurocentric no, standard like women at look. All. Ever. We're never going to look like them. Yeah. And I think just leaning into femininity is whatever you want it to look like. Exactly. So if that's like wearing a crop top and whatever then mm-hmm. wear that mm-hmm. obish wear whatever you want whatever man. you perceive to make you feel feminine mm-hmm. or or a beautiful or attractive whatever yeah. whatever you perceive for that to be then do it then yeah. that's what it is i was gonna say i think a really good show if you have hbo max obish you mm-hmm. should watch we're here i think that's what it's called with uh as eureka o'hara oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, shangela and bob the drag queen Mm -hmm. and they go to conservative towns and do um they each have a drag daughter or son or some some variation of that yeah and they do like a whole it's almost like doing queer eye but they have they've prepped them for a drag show yeah and they perform together and i love watching like especially bob because bob is non-binary yeah um talking about how they navigate femininity in so many different ways yeah because some some people are like and this is like I guess like the white centric version of being feminine is like, Oh, long hair and nails and yeah. makeup. Whereas like sometimes Bob doesn't want to wear a wig and they yeah. just want to, maybe I don't want to wear a dress. Maybe I want to wear like high waisted pants or whatever. So yeah. if you can watch that, because they, they work with a lot of different like cis straight white men who mm-hmm. they have to show them that like, just cause you're doing this doesn't make you feminine. Yeah. And even if you were to act feminine, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, exactly. So I would, if that's we, another thing too. Mm-hmm. Femininity is always perceived to be a weakness. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's perceived to be something that to be ashamed of, mm-hmm. um, which is again, it just like is a catch 22 always yeah. for any sort of femme presenting person in this world. Yeah. So whatever your definition of femininity is, whatever makes you feel confident and comfortable, mm-hmm. then that's what it is. Don't let anyone tell you different. Yeah. It's 100% up to you. Whatever feels good to you. Yeah. This one's good because I know I'll I'll have a lot to add to this and it'll be funny for you to do so. So this one's from someone, this person's named Ari and it's spelled A-R-Y and they put in parentheses, pronounced Ari. Ari. They literally put pronounced Ari like Ariana Grande, period. (laughs) Um, And her question is, I need advice on how to not become attached to people easily. (laughs) <laughs> don't ask Nason. that's it, my advice this is something you. that always happens to me in family relationships and friendships and even romantic ones i know i need to stop but i can't seem to get myself to not be attached so fast well first of all i would love to know what your sign is right yeah. i would have loved to know what your sign is should, I, that, next time we do these we're yeah, gonna I know. just put your, yeah, your big three you. in here <laughs> <laughs> we should do an astrology episode yeah um uh, i would love to know what your sign is mm-hmm. because i'm so curious um your big three specifically but um, well, first off, my like I said earlier, don't ask Dace because Dason tends to attach herself to people a lot mm-hmm. too. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. But I do think sometimes it can uh, work against you. Yeah. You can get, you're very more susceptible to getting taken advantage yeah. of when you attach like that. Yeah. You have to ask yourself too, why? Why are you yeah. attaching like that? Is it- I would look at your attachment style. Yeah. And so, which is, is I, it anxious? It's definitely anxious. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. um, I think I would look at that and then see how you can better attach yourself to people in ways that is healthy for you and that yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, where you feel seen and taken care of and heard and like if something bad happens, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think a lot of times, um, when people have a very aggressive, anxious attachment style, I think a lot of times it has to do with, um, Maybe someone has said something to you in a past relationship, whether mm-hmm. it was a friendship or um romantic relationship where like it makes you feel like you're never enough. Yeah. So you're constantly temp gauging. Mm-hmm. You're like, hey, 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 how's it going? How's yeah. it going? Do you still love me? Do you still love me? And I think it's not on you that that's happened. Yeah. But maybe it would be easier for you to diagnose it as soon as you see it. Sure. If you feel yourself starting to get anxiously attached to someone, Mm -hmm. maybe you reach out to somebody else and be like, hey, like, (laughs) this is what I'm feeling. Like I said, sometimes it helps to like get your feelings out. Yeah. Whether you write them down or you talk to someone that you trust and Mm -hmm. you're like, hey, this is how I'm feeling. Well, ask yourself why. Why do you feel the need to attach yourself like that so quickly? Yeah. Like, is it a trauma response? Is it something where, like, you know, maybe you feel like they might leave you and they may never come back? Like, sometimes it's, like, an abandonment thing, which is also, again, not your fault. But if you would diagnose it early on, it might be easier to start working on it. Yeah. 
right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you have that. <laughs> I'm not the anxious dad. I tell everyone I love them all the time. Like, yeah, I Jason's very like, okay, we're best friends now. Yeah. Like after, after I just love out. doing that. I, but I think now that I'm older, I have a better understanding of like yeah. who's gonna fuck me over and who's not. Yeah, Jason and, has, I'm, and I, yeah. I'm a lot more sparing with like my I love yous and like yeah. me. Well, see, here's a great me. example. Right, okay. this is a great example of Jason. So like, Jason. <laughs> Like, is obviously single, so, mm. like, she's on the prowl, Stop. you know what I mean? Okay. And going. so, like, someone will, on like... On the prowl, <laughs> all right? <laughs> I just see, like, she's in the dating scene right now. But sometimes people will, like, like will reach out to her. In the sense that it's very platonic, it's very, like, it's it could be flirt flirty in its very nature, but it's also just, like, hey, like, you look... that That's cute, or, like, I love your cats, like, something like that. Yeah. And so, this is, like, a perfect example of reaching out to someone else. Jason will bring it to me, and she'll be like, hey, this person said this to me, and I'm all, okay. And she'll be like, do you think that that's flirting? And I'll go, I don't think so. <laughs> right? And she goes, well, see, then I was thinking, like, they live across the country. Like, what what would I do? Like, how would we work out? Like, how would we do holidays? Like, she's already thinking, like... <laughs> I like to think ahead. <laughs> She's already. You know what that is? If this person, I'm a Sagittarius. Yeah, and they're very like all over the place. Like, well, and also very all in. Yeah, and like, spontaneous. They're very like I'm pushing all my chips to the center. Like immediately, as soon as they're like yes, you know what I mean. Like yeah. they commit, which is a good thing and also a bad thing. Mm-hmm. But um, she was like, well, how would holidays work? Like, what? It, like, would I go see their family? Would they come see mine? I'm all. You don't even know this fucking bitch. <laughs> like. <laughs> And I and see that that's a perfect example though because she'll tell me mm-hmm. someone who keeps their foot out the door at all times yeah. <laughs> in any relationship, mm-hmm. and then I I was like, hey man, you don't even really know this fucking person. Yeah, let's dial it down just a little bit. And so someone like me will temp gauge her, like she'll it'll recalibrate her. Yeah, and she'll be like, okay, yeah, you're right. And then she'll think she'll reset her and be like, yeah, you're right. I was just like curious, and I'll be like, okay, cool. And then it just <laughs> she falls asleep, wakes up, forgets it, and then does it all over again. <laughs> Or I'll be day. like, yeah, they keep talking to me and you're just, they're flirting with you. I'm yeah. Like, it's one extreme or the other. Like someone will say something so platonic to her and she'll be like, do you think this person loves me? And, like, <laughs> and I'm like, no. And then someone will literally tell Dason very explicitly that they want to take her on a date. She goes, what's this person's problem? I'm like, I think they like you. Dason has no gauge of it. And it sounds like that's what this person's problem is. Yeah. Too. Like you, you just have no perception of my new thing is I just assume no one like, like, Oh, that's, which sounds really bad. And I'm working on this in therapy, but that no one likes me, but like in a but way, that's not true. No, I know. Yeah. Um, cause I like me. That's yeah. enough. Right. There you go. Um, I that's all you, that matters. I hope you like me. Um, eh. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Listeners. <laughs> I just assume that no one is flirting with me now so that i'm yeah. not embarrassed so yeah if this which is per- like a a like a constant fear that people are like like yeah. the other shooter drop kind yeah. of thing which well, is yeah if not a healthy rejection thing is very like universal yeah, for sure. yeah yeah everybody struggles with that so i'm like especially nah, in dating we're like on bumble and people are matching with me and i'm all they don't like me that's why i said like she, she someone literally would be like oh my god your cats are so cute and she goes this person literally wants to fuck me so bad and i'm like dude <laughs> I'm like, I mean, maybe, but I wouldn't, I I don't think I picked that up from this specific sentiment, but then someone will be like, I think you're so pretty. Like, are you free this Saturday? And she's like, what does this person want to do? Like hang out with me or something. And I'm like, yeah, bitch, I think that they like you. And I think they want to take you on a date. So that's kind of sounds like what you're, where you're at. I would be so interested to know what your sign is though, girly. What are your guess? What's your guess? I mean, I would say, I would probably say Sagittarius. You think so? But they're not I like, what's like a really anxious sign <sighs> when you say virgo <laughs> i mean yeah but i mean i i think tauruses are pretty anxious sure. but tauruses are anxious like all over the place anxious yeah, 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 yeah um virgos are anxious because they can't control everything and i can relate to that yeah <laughs> but you know what girl what was the question <laughs> are you on how to know? deal with it right yeah, yeah, just like, I know I need to stop, but I can't help myself to not get attacked. Well, just understand, too, that that's just who you are. Yeah, and there's, there's nothing wrong, wrong with you. With yeah. yeah, like, oh, like yeah. you're just, you're someone who loves and loves a hundred percent. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. And you know what? You're going to meet, I have a lot of new friends, and yeah. they love that about me. And you're, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You're going to find someone, that's what I'm saying, you're being made to believe that that's a bad thing, mm-hmm. when it's not necessarily. No. The only reason I would say it was bad is because when you devote that much to the wrong people yeah, it girl, hurts let me know it hurts you yeah. 
<laughs> it, just, it hurts you. Mm-hmm. So that's why I would say it was a bad thing. Um, yeah. But it's not a bad thing. Loving wholeheartedly, putting your whole pussy into loving someone yeah. is not a bad thing. So don't ever let someone make you think it's a bad thing. I would just say to start directing that energy towards yourself. Yeah. And towards people who deserve it. Yeah. Period. Start being start being more selective. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your name. Okay. So this person doesn't feel comfortable sharing their name. But okay. She would like to know. What's your best advice to girls in the eighth and ninth grade on finding your true personality and who you really are and how mm-hmm. to start acting like your true self? First of all, I'm in the nothing grade and I'm still learning this. So if you're in the eighth or ninth grade and you're like, what am I doing? Yeah, honestly, most most people in general are like Dason in the sense that like they don't really you're never really sure and it evolves with time yeah i feel Um, like you've evolved too though no absolutely i've just always been so certain of like who i am as at my very core um but like the superficial parts of my personality have Mm -hmm. definitely changed i would hope so yeah (laughs) over time just like the things my likes and interests like obviously i've grown like my my beliefs, my yeah, morals, like all that yeah, stuff yeah. has grown and evolved with me over mm-hmm. time. But the very essence of me has stayed the same, yeah. I would say. I think that's most people. But let's I say most people are like you in the sense that they they think they don't know who they are. I just, I think you do know who you are. I think sometimes it just takes takes courage to kind of embrace Yeah, I it. feel like I do know now. But like, yeah. and like we've done... Um, like at least two or three episodes on pick me girls and yeah uh, and on how we're navigating what is it is that toxic masculinity yeah yeah so internalized misogyny internalized misogyny that's what I'm yeah thinking of. same but also same toxic same honestly yeah, yeah it's all fucking think, two sides uh, of the same coin i think like people like around this time are so lucky to be growing up during this age because i wish i had known so much of what i know now that's same. A, that's like easily um available for everyone to yeah. learn about because of same. social media and whatever mm-hmm. um so i think my best advice to finding your true personality and who you really are. I, we always talk about this, like whatever you want to like. Yeah. Man. If you want to be the biggest K-pop fan in the entire world, then do it. Yeah. There, you're not the only person who likes stuff like that. No, there are plenty it's true. Of people who like that. I think that's the truest way you could be true to yourself. Yeah. Is to like whatever you want to like unapologetically. Yeah. And to also, as long as it doesn't harm other people. Yeah. You know, and also to not feel I mean, I'm curious to know, is this person in the eighth or ninth grade? I don't know. Oh, maybe it's their kids. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I would say, too, to not feel like you have to grow up so fast. Mm. Because especially now, yeah. like, that's the one thing I will say about the positives to growing up in the time we did when we were in those grades. Yeah. Is because um, social media wasn't nearly as prominent yeah. as it is now. Or, so, like, Charlie Tamillion is, like, a billionaire at 17. Exactly. So, you yeah. see you see people your age living this life that some adults don't even fucking yeah. live. Like, like whether it's financially yeah, or just opportunity-wise, yeah, yeah. career-wise. Yeah. Um, and then it makes you feel this incessant need to like grow up faster. Yeah. Um, and that's why a lot of times I feel like sometimes kids are like, oh, I'm too old for that shit. And yeah. they're like 13. Yeah. Um, like if you're 13, be 13, man. Like, like enjoy yourself. I, w- I wish I had embraced that way more. Yeah. I like, always <clears throat> wish I was older. Yeah. And like, I was always mentally older. So yeah. I think that's why I didn't give a shit about the things that I liked. Like I, if I wanted to literally dance my ass off to the hoe down throw down in front of my eighth grade classmates, I was going to do that shit. At a family reunion <laughs> for a talent show, do the, the entire hoe down throw down. Yeah. We're, foot on with a, a bunch of like someone old people and all of them are like, what the fuck? What is this all of them are watching and no one's clapping or even engaging remotely. <laughs> Yeah, that's something we both did. I actually had to convince Jason to do it with me, and yeah. then immediately after and you know what's so funny? I was in the ninth grade, and you were in the eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> like whatever the fuck. You and immediately like. after that, she goes, "Why did you make me do that?" And I go, "What do you mean? We killed it up there." We were laughing and smiling the whole time <laughs> because in my head, I literally there was fanfare. Like everyone was like, "Yeah," when when genuinely it was so silent, and you could just hear our feet squeaking on the fucking. <laughs> like that's a perfect example. Like. We were literally eighth and ninth grade, mm-hmm. and we, for some reason, Savo and family reunions, they always have a talent show. And my family's always the one that doesn't remember that there was a talent show. So we, none of us know what to do or yeah. perform. And they get so like, we used to like center because our brother did Taekwondo growing up. So we yeah. used to make him go up there and do one of his forms. <laughs> yeah. And even then, they'd be like, all right. Yeah. And so then this year, we were like, this year that this happened, <laughs> I had just learned the hold down, throw down. And anytime anybody said anything remotely similar to like, 
dancing. Like it didn't even have to be that country music. Like someone would say something about a cowboy hat. I'm all, have you ever heard of the hot dance on them? And I would make you're them. All, you're all boom, boom, clap. Yeah. <laughs> and I would literally make them look it up so yeah. that I could show them because I just like, as a Virgo, I like to teach people how to do things and <laughs> tell people how to do things. <laughs> I did that all the time. So I literally. Yeah, I know. It's irritating. I literally convinced Jason to like do it with me at the talent show. And we were in eighth and ninth grade. Yeah. And arguably too old for that. You know, you no. know what? <laughs> I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. But that's a perfect example of just being authentically, how fucking old was I? 13? Yeah. Yeah. Like just being 13 years old. I would say to just understand that who you are at 13 is not who you're going to be. Hopefully when yeah. you're in your twenties, yeah. like I would hope to God, you're not the same person mm-hmm. you are when you're 13, but you're not going to be in that stage of life forever. So you're obviously going to grow and evolve mm-hmm. with time. And it's okay if who you are then is not who you are now. Like, yeah. it's okay if it if it grows with and you. So, yeah, I feel like the easiest way to figure out your real personality and who you are as a person yeah. is enjoying things that you enjoy. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Looking into things you want to do. Like, Learn about. Things you, yeah. things you want to explore. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's the only way you truly find out who you are. Yeah. Or what you like and what you want to do. Yeah. Which will lead to you discovering who you really yeah. are. Yeah. And I think, like, being in the 8th and ninth grade, I mean, I hated high school, even though it wasn't a bad experience. I think I just like was so anxious and uncomfortable constantly that uh, yeah. I felt like I didn't really get to be who I wanted to be till I got to go to college. Yeah. Like, I feel like most kids go through that. Yeah. But in eighth and ninth grade or anything throughout middle school and high school, um, my dad would always tell us like, literally like no one cares. Yeah. Like no one, I'm telling you right now, like anything mean that happens to you in high school or things that people make fun of you for or whatever. Yeah no one will care after yeah like i i told Dason this i watched uh j soup see like things like euphoria exist yeah so people like kids who are in high school currently are like oh i don't look like that when i'm in high school no, that's I why i loved this season because i was like i was literally lexi <laughs> if i could pick like, every, every that's why someone's like y'all are acting like you're maddie when really you're, la- you're all of you are lexi <laughs> yeah well that's what i'm saying like, no, so it's a no you're literally coconut <laughs> Ned's to glass yeah on. well that's the thing about um specifically about euphoria i watched jay stoops talk about euphoria okay. and like the kind shout of, out our girl yeah i love her. her i fucking love we're her. gonna get her on here one day guys i love Sit megan tight. i love her so I watched her talk about Euphoria because obviously there was lots of backlash about like, this is supposed to be high school. Mm-hmm. Like, why are they going through all these adult themes? Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But she was saying that she saw someone talk about like one of the writers, I think it was, or creators of Euphoria. Okay. And they were talking about how Euphoria is supposed to be when you're in high school, mm-hmm. you think that everything is the end of the yeah. world. Oh my Anything God. that happens to you, like whether it's wow. big or small. So she was saying, you, you're just like perception of, of, of problems yeah. and the world is, is just so pinhole uh-huh. small. Like it's just, it's through a pinhole lens. Mm-hmm. So everything is catastrophic to your world. So they were saying euphoria is something that's like, what if the problems actually were as bad as you thought they were? Yeah. yeah. Like what if they were actually like, how would they be and how would they react? Yeah. Like if they actually were that terrible. Mm-hmm. So I was like, that's a really interesting way of looking at euphoria because the problems are the most adult themes. Ever. They're yeah. the most traumatic, terrible yeah. themes. So look at like Degrassi. Like yeah, Degrassi's another one. But even Degrassi wasn't anywhere near Euphoria. Like I, I feel like you in the sense, think so? no, no way. It, you know what? I mean, it was Gossip bad. Girl. Yeah, Gossip Girl was yeah. pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, Gossip Girl was like it was like shit. Where it was like, there's no way. Like it was like so unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Vampire Diaries, right? <laughs> That's another one. That's the most accurate representation of high go. school ever. I, the first, Twilight. The first time I ever showed Billy Vampire Diaries, because the show is good. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Yeah. But after season five, fucking count me out. As soon as Stefan and Elena, don't even get me started. I'm not going to start about that again. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> the first time We're I showed you a blooper reel, and it's just you talking about fucking Vampire Diaries every episode. About Stelena. Every every episode, you you look for a way to loop that in. I don't know how or why. But yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, We're talking about Ed Sheeran. You know, you know who <laughs> got blew up on Vampire Diaries? Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Ed Sheeran and Vampire Diaries are the two things I always have to talk about. No, but I was going to say, the first time I ever showed Billy Vampire Diaries, yeah. I really wanted him to watch it because I knew he would like it. He goes, that guy's supposed to be in high school about Stefan. <laughs> first episode. And then I go, Is yeah. Stefan younger? No, no. Well, no. They're the same. They're supposed to be the same age. They're supposed to be 17. Both of them. Stefan and Damon. No, Damon's supposed to be older. Okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah he no, was more. I remember. Yeah, okay. Damon's supposed to be like 20 or something. 
He's supposed to be like three years older than me. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, he goes, that guy's supposed to be in high school? I go, yeah, he goes, that 37-year-old? <laughs> and I go, see, that's the problem, is like, when you watch high school shows, yeah. they're all people in their fucking 20s. I know. Playing no, yeah. 15-year-old kids. The only show I can think of off the top of my head that doesn't really do that. High School Musical, the musical show. Yes. <laughs> Which is iconic. If you don't watch yeah. it, you should. Drew doesn't watch it, so don't listen I to don't, her. I don't. No, the don't finale. Listen to her. I watched the finale. I watched the finale. Who cares? You don't watch I'm just show. saying they look like they're in high school and they're of high school age. Yeah. You know that's all I mean? the sh- that is a good example. Yeah. No, I was going to say on my block. Oh, yeah. They all the kids watched look like they're in high school. But see, like, you, everyone watches you for it and they're like, this would literally never happen in a high school. <laughs> you would never see this. But if you watch On My Block, like, they're dealing with gangs, which is very, like, yeah, real. Yeah, very real. Yeah. But they're also chasing, they're, like, on a treasure hunt oh i didn't know that yeah that's like the, the one of the big plots of the show oh, okay. it's like them trying to help their friend not get inducted into the gang that his brother's a part okay, of. okay 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 and then them also trying to find this like infamous like missing money i didn't that know that treasure stole. was a yeah, part of literally that show treasure. yeah that's funny. And then they start like outer them. banks <laughs> literally that's not an accurate show at all no it isn't because you're old but they're all supposed to be in high school yeah yeah see well that's what i'm what, saying the like, hockey job's a boat <laughs> <laughs> like don't ever in like riverdale Look that's, at those, those. That's the most accurate representation of those, high school those of all time. Tax paying adults are not in fucking high school. But see, that's, that's they did a time jump though, so show some respect. <laughs> that's that's the thing. That's what all I'm American. Saying. Do you think yeah. they look like they're in high school? Fuck no, dude. No, one of the girls from that show follows me. I know. <laughs> Period. Uh, no, but that's why I'm saying like don't uh, don't align your high school experience to what you see on TV. Yeah. What you see on social media, it's not the same. Unless it's Vampire Diaries. And- <laughs> Yeah, unless it's vampire. Diaries. If your best friend's not a witch and you're not trying to pick which brother, and you're yeah, and your do, boyfriend is like a seven hundred year old vampire, then you're having the wrong. And they all experience. they all only wear leather. You only wear red. They drink scotch. Yeah. <laughs> Grow up. That's the only accurate one. You're Not even Euphoria can compete with the accuracy of no, Vampire no. Diaries. But that's what I'm saying. Like when I was in high school, bro, like. I was just a fucking, I was just a normal ass person. Yeah. Like, it's so normal. Like, you, obviously, you go through drama, or whatever, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, but, yeah. like, I'm just saying the high school experience itself is not anywhere near any of the things you see online Mm-mm. nowadays. So don't compare it. And then that way you can healthily try and, like, find out what, what is you really love, what yeah. is you really like, what you're drawn to. And then you'll know for sure who you are when you graduate from high school. Mm-hmm. High school is not a determining factor. No. There are some people who were the fucking worst in high Man. school and aren't anymore. Yeah. And the opposite. Some people were really great in high school and then you find out they're a fucking bigot in 2016. Damn. <laughs> so there you go. Like yeah. the person you are in high school is not who you're going to be forever. You're mm-hmm. hopefully going to grow. It and shouldn't evolve. be. But yeah. yeah. If you're going to grow and evolve for the better. Yeah. And you're going to become the person you're meant to be. Mm-hmm. But even when you're in your 20s, people are still very unsure of who they yeah, are. You're evolving. You're growing. Yeah. And, you, and things out. change. Like mm-hmm. your your goals change. Your mindset changes. Like what you want. Mm-hmm. All of that shifts and changes constantly. When yeah. You're older. Don't put a time stamp on it. Yeah. Don't be like, by the time I'm 18, I have to know exactly what I want to do. No. That's not true. You don't need to. And then like people are so mean in high school because yeah. their kids and kids are mean. Oh, and everybody's insecure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I remember my dad telling me, I'm telling you right now, Dace, five years from now, in a year from now, you won't talk to any of these people And none ever of these again. people are going to matter. Yeah, and he was right. <laughs> there's was only, right. there's a select few people yeah. from high school that we still talk to. And um, are, well, I only have one. Well, and Billy. So. <laughs> yeah, and Billy. <laughs> I have like a few people from high school that I'm so cool with. But like, other than that, <clears throat> you're going to change. You're going to grow. Yeah. Figure out what you like. So I would just like what you like now. Yeah. And I would and be, fall- be an eighth or ninth grader. Yeah. Just oh, enjoy man. it. man. What a time to be alive. Yeah. You don't got to pay bills. Eighth grade. I'm no, just kidding. Honestly, I think my favorite grade of all time was sixth grade. I don't have a favorite grade. Sixth grade. I, I had think. so much fun. I want to say my favorite. I was going to say ninth grade, but I tore my ACL in ninth grade. So that wasn't very fun. No. Nah. I don't know. I had to, I, I would have to really think about it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a hard question because i i genuinely don't give a shit about any of the grades i was in but i had the most fun in college yeah yeah if you if you want to go to college and you have the means to do so please go to fucking college yeah that's where you really find out who you are yeah and that's who you find your real friends that's mm-hmm. how you find friends that you're gonna like act like those are the friends that are gonna be in your fucking wedding and shit yeah when you go to college and if you don't want to go to college you can you know i feel like a post high school is for exactly everyone. like if you don't want to go to college and that's not for you that's totally fine um just who you are in high school is not who you're gonna be forever i promise no who you're friends with yeah no yeah your crushes man 
Yeah. Like the very, that's why I said the very essence of you is going to stay the same, but all the other shit is going to evolve and grow yeah, with dude. you. Finding Which out all important. your high school crushes are bigots. <laughs> that's tough pill to swallow. That's why I said 2016 came around, really shifted that fucking <laughs> chessboard. Then I was like, damn, not you. So thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Two Idiot Girls. <laughs> thank you for sending in your advice questions. I'm sorry we didn't get to all of them, but this would have been the longest episode in the entire world if we answered all 140 of them. Yeah. But if you uh, want to be included in our next episodes, please look out for a new Google link that we'll put out this week mm -hmm. um, with a theme and then send in your questions according to the theme. Yes. Um, but yeah, so please make sure to follow us on Instagram. What? I was going to laugh at something. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hurry up, bro. No, 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 Go, just close it. No, just, close just it. say it. No, no, no. It's not It's not anything related to what we're talking about, so I got to tell you after. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Sorry. No, I'm laughing. <laughs> no, my hands are laughing. <laughs> okay. I literally was like this. I was like... <laughs> I know, that's why I was like, stop. Anyways. Okay. Um, Please be sure to follow us on Instagram at underscore two idiot girls. Um, our podcast is available everywhere that you can listen to a podcast. And this video will be on YouTube. Uh -huh. So make sure that you do it. <laughs> make sure you check out all of our stuff. Um, and yeah, we'll see you in the next episode.